Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Welcome to Frazado, Keeper of the Master. All right, we're going to look at issue one, quite a bit of the art from issue one, and then we're going to look at a little bit of issue two. This was a six graphic album series that was released by Heavy Metal in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Frazado is absolutely an awesome artist. He's so great. There's probably a portion of people that follow my channel that won't know Frazado's work, and then there's other people that will. Unfortunately, I mean, I haven't really seen a ton of his art since this series, and this series was finished years ago. I mean, I have all the hardcover books. I bought them, I think, honestly, I, I remember owning the first three and waiting kind of for uh, four, five, and six to come out. But it's so good. So we're just going to get right into this because I've got to get to work. And I uh, want to make sure that I give you guys a really, really cool morning experience. So, all right, the cover. He does line art and then paints the work. And um, to me, this holds up quite well in terms of American aesthetics of comics, which is uh, like the black holding line. Oh, let me get a full screen mode for a second. I was going to show some of the sketchbook uh, from that. But um, yeah, so it's you can see that there's actually an ink line around th things, um, and at times he'll pull it out. But but uh, it helps keep the work looking pretty bold. Uh, he does really really great like cartoony little character character characters, not caricatures. Um, it was funny yesterday. I said. Um, uh, I I said I meant to say prodigy, and I said. A protege. <laughs> I listened to it back. I'm like, protege? What the hell are you talking about? Uh, anyway, <laughs> like I said, I fly by the seat of my pants when I do these videos. So, uh, you know, you get what you get. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this guy's so good. I remember when I, I saw this art, I was like, this is the key. This is something that connects with me. I always like to draw cartoony characters. But there was like there's a level of artistry that this stuff has that that makes it like feel um, substantial. It's not just cartoony, which can sometimes be I think more easily dismissed as uh, you know oh it's easy to do or uh, you know like it has like less value than something that's like super hyper detailed or photorealistic. Um, Great cartooning and great storytelling um, is a challenge onto its own anyway. Really, really great like um, use of camera movement in this page. If you look, I mean, he's got a great sort of, like, he, he, he does a really nice job on most pages of showing you where you're at, giving you the action, pulling in so that there's the conversation that's going on or the action that's going on. And then he's able to pull the camera back out, give you a sense of scale, and keep you moving along and it's really really good and and um you know this is a fairly panel heavy page i mean he's got um seven eight nine ten oh, wait i'm sorry <laughs> I, was, I was counting panels below so it's four five six seven eight eight panels is getting heavy but that, nothing feels claustrophobic nothing feels too like um you know just like underwhelming i'm gonna keep seeing this every time i go to the next page look at this this is awesome uh his color palette is really unique to his own thing. There's actually a sketchbook too that you can get from this. I mean, I think that there's a hardcover book that's a collection of his um, uh, drawings, and I have that too somewhere. Well, I know where they all are. They're in my storage, but um, I have one of his books in here. I have Second Moon, so it's the first book. It would be this one. I can see it on the shelf. Yeah, really, really great designs. It's it's almost got um, a uh, a little bit of a Studio Ghibli or Ghibli, whatever. I don't know how you say it. I like. It's the weirdest thing about working at home alone. Like, like I don't, I don't really. The only person that I talk to like verbally, like out loud about art now is Kelsey, basically. So, so like when I would work at a studio, you would hear someone else say like an artist name. I would be you know, like Bill Sinkevich, like like. I've obviously, I've been working in the business a long time. I know how to pronounce like all the more tricky comic book artist names. Um, but uh, yeah, when you don't when you don't really hear someone say stuff, you just don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah, I've never been around anyone who's said it out loud. <laughs> His characters are funny. They're very human. I mean, human in that they're they're like soft noses and soft features and stuff. 
But yeah, there's a little bit of a like Miyazaki kind of thing going on with his art. Ah, look at that. It's so cool. <laughs> I love this little robot guy too. He would be he would have really been an interesting artist for humanoids to work with. I think he could have done some amazing graphic novels for him. And I'm saying could have. I, I don't again, I don't know what he's been up to for like the last like ten or fifteen years. I'm actually quite curious to be honest. So usually we're able to figure it out quite quickly after I do one of these videos and put a little attention on an artist. So I'll either look it up or um, you guys can let me know. Either is fun. Man, that's awesome. So creepy. It's interesting too is is like like when I was pulling these these images um uh I was I was noticing how how much room he had to tell this part of the story, this flying chase scene. We're 13 pages into this book, and this is like still going on. That's a lot of time in a first issue to devote to a plane sequence, a flying sequence. But he had the time to do it, and um, it's interesting, you know. Getting some Death Stranding vibes now. Death Stranding Two is coming out. The trailer looked pretty good. It was a little... There was some stuff in it that I wasn't, like, completely wild about. It wasn't bad, but just, like, you know, I mean... Um, but uh, I'm I'm always hopeful for anything that Kojima does that it's awesome, so... I think Al Pacino might be in the next game. <laughs> eyes are great. That's kind of the color of my eyes. I know because I've seen him up close. <laughs> oh my. Uh, uh, uh. Man, that's a great panel. It's interesting too is uh, watch this. I'm so like like I'm so used to seeing art in black and white and like this is painted so it has a lot of value. But it's really, really interesting to me when pages don't have much black. Because I really use black as like an anchor for my art. And when I draw stuff and I don't have black like in the panel, it feels really weird to me. It feels like I didn't complete it. And it's not about just like dropping in black to have black. But like a, a panel where it's like, you know, like this would be a white sky if you didn't have anything in it. I mean, you might have the outline of this. It, it feels lazy to me when I do it in black and white. Where I'm like, man, I need to like render the sky <laughs> i don't know if any of you feel like that when you draw pages like because i always think in color i don't i don't i think in color in terms of like i i, I have a vision of what i think that the, the piece would look like done not ex like it is exact colors but i'm not um, married to that idea like the colors can be whatever like the mood is right but um uh yeah it's it is really interesting working um without value you know, you can use value, line, line work creates value, to be clear, but um, there's a lot of panels on this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, nine panels. Again, it doesn't, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. You got to be real careful of what you choose to do when you do small stuff like this, though. You know, this is clear that, that there's like an object kind of like shooting out of the water, but... Um, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to have too much small that that is important. Like that's a nice little moment. Really interesting beat how he pulled the camera out so far on the shot because I mean he really really zoomed out like tremendously, but it gives a really good um, animation of this guy flying across the water. So interesting storytelling from him for sure. Ah, it's nice. can't remember who wrote this book we'll see on the second one i have the cover for the second one so we should be able to see or does it say on the side of my book no it just says frazado so maybe he wrote it and drew it i'm really curious of what this guy's been up to it's like now the burning question 
Oh man, that's cool. His work doesn't look like Juan Jimenez, but the color palette reminds me a little bit of Juan Jimenez. And some of this stuff has like a little bit of a Jimenez vibe to me. So it's po it's possible that he might have been influenced by Juan's work a little bit. So this this feels Jimenez-y. Jimenez I will be doing a Juan Jimenez video probably tomorrow. I'm hitting all these European graphic novel guys um, just because it's, it's I, I always think that this is exceptional work. And, um, uh, kind of like this is when i started for me personally started getting into what i would consider more serious uh, comic art not that there isn't serious comic art in america but the graphic albums seem to have an, a level of artistry that was a little above and beyond just pumping out one issue a month of whatever and I think comics, when I started collecting, suffered a lot from fill-in issues, maybe not really great written stories a lot of the time, and so this stuff definitely was more substantial, as, as was um, some manga I was getting into. Felt like the stories were, were more about it. Ah, oh, man, it's so fun. Look at that. That's a really nice panel. This is a great shot right here. I actually really like this. This is fantastic. I love stuff like this. Them looking off at the moon. Or I guess they're flicking this thing. But this is really, really cool too. God, this stuff is so simple. I mean, this wouldn't be simple to do. But like, I'm just looking like at this. And just like, besides the painting part of it. Like the line art is so like, man. But he does the heavy lifting with the paint. Well, nudity. I forgot about that. This guy's cool. <laughs> There's a, a fat lady in the second issue. And it's funny because I have a pencil drawing that I did of her from back in the day. It's a nice little drawing, honestly. Like it's, I keep it in my office just to remind me of how tight I can pencil. <laughs> it's like... It was kind of like because I, when I was learning to draw just as a kid, I would I would try to mimic is exactly what I would see. So like um, I got pretty good at being able to see like small detail, um, but it doesn't translate into comic art really well. But but it developed my eye in a way that um, probably was a good thing. And then I was really into cartooning. So between the two, it's, I had a weird birth of kind of thing going on. Ah, this is such a great panel. <laughs> At times when I was opening these pieces, it was reminding me of um, Jim Murray's art on um, that water book that he did. Drown Town. Like, the color palettes and stuff like that were similar. I could see Jim Murray of be being a fan of this stuff. It, you, you, most artists would like this to some extent. It might not be their exact cup of tea, but I think most people would appreciate how well this is done. But again, you can see, even though this is a painted comic book, it's got this hard line around it, the ink line, or whatever he's using to do it. It could be um, acrylic paint, but... Um, he that that really helps the stuff along it's like simon bisley when he paints does that too this is crazy this almost looks like a photo it's so wild it, it, i'm almost sure that it isn't but man he fucking nailed this it's got to be painted that's a really great sequence <laughs> his face Yeah, this was... Okay, so this is the second book. So this is Keeper of the Masters number two. I love this character design. I didn't open the whole sketchbook on this, but the second issue, this one, does have a design and sketchbook section of it. And I remember at the time, uh, Rob Liefeld got dinged for ripping off something from it. And I can't remember what it would be exactly, but but hopefully i have the image that it is and someone might recognize what it what it would what it possibly could have been 
Um, but I don't remember. But I remember at the time that was a thing for a minute. <laughs> As things in comics are. They last a minute. Then the drama subsi subsides. It's like, this looks familiar. He's like, what could it be? It's Rob Liefeld. <laughs> Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> that's so funny. Are these guns? Like, they don't really look like guns. Like, what is it? so shiny inside the gun? It's so weird. Like, it, you would think it was uh, glass here, the way that the light is hitting this, because this is sealed. This one, I, it looks like it goes in, and then he's got, like, this hot spot on the inside of the pipe. It's a little weird. But maybe it's a, a a finder. This is the fat lady that I drew. If I can find the drawing, I'll, I'll let you know. Or what it's similar to. I'll po I like can post it on like Instagram or something. This was really interesting. I remember seeing the book and seeing this, and it's like this is a really really interesting sequence. It I it's a fascinating choice that he did his eyes flesh colored. I never was sure why that was. I guess he has sort of red orangish eyes it's like maybe he's like a different race or something yeah he's like all zooped up on something really really nice page man this is beautifully painted look at this right here that's so good all right let's continue friends I picked these based on the thumbnail. Oh, yeah, the little hamster guys. See, Jim Murray, like, this This is very similar to the Bisley-Jim Murray connection. Because Jim did some stuff like this. Although, Biz, like I said, Bisley would too, but I'm seeing a connection. I'm going to theorize. Oh, I love this. This is so good. Let me pull out a little bit. It's a little... This is such a great layout right here. Man, that's kick-ass. This blue works great inside of this, too. It really actually is... Like, he got... like It's almost like a happy accident of how nice these shapes work together. But, man, it's killer. And he pulls you right to there. This is great, too. Fuck. So good. Comics is fun. This is why I say, like, I'm, I'm you know... I'm a little bored with cover art and have been for quite a while. I appreciate good cover art. But nothing is better than seeing an artist that can really draw good, do sequentials. Because they just draw shit that you're never, ever going to see on a cover. And little little moments like that of just talent, creativity, fortuitous events. But it's really, really interesting to see. You just don't get that with cover art, honestly. And there's so many examples of amazing cover art, but I don't know. Sequentials is where it's at. That's a really, really nice shot. Mud Butt thinks I don't like digital art. He totally didn't understand what I said. In fact, I was fighting back the words to say that in some ways I like digital art better than traditional art sometimes. But um, he took it as because I don't like digitally painted comics very much. Um, that I don't like digital art, which is in fact not accurate. Um, I, what I don't like is I don't like a soft look throughout a whole comic. It's got to have a graphic feel to it, or it ends up looking too much like like if a whole book was painted like this right here, it starts to look too much the same. Hardline stuff can get that too. It depends on how the person draws, but um, digitally painted is the same way where it's like there's concept artists that I think are fucking amazing but i don't know if their work would hold up in a 40 or 50 page book um because of the techniques that they use to paint digitally paint so it's just my opinion it doesn't mean it's right or wrong but i love digital art ah oh, she's so cool looking man i love this character I like that I can take a name like Mudbutt completely seriously and actually refer to him and not actually. There's I, I it just is he might as well be named John. In fact, he could be John John Mudbutt. <laughs> this is great. Let's 
man, that's so nice. See, and this is this is one of the things that always gets me is you just it's so difficult to get this type of effect with just pen and ink, like this this light coming down through here because you're really only your only option. I did it with my black drawing pieces is you would have to render all of this in gray, so this would all be hatched. And then you would do lighter hatches here. I did it on my samurai piece. In fact, there's a samurai piece that I did before I did my black drawing pieces. And there's a bunch of samurais in the upper panel coming through a forest. And I have light filtering through the trees like that. And it was, I had to make it up. I, I had to literally just pull techniques that I thought might possibly work. I had no, I had no role model to get that effect. But it worked out pretty good. And then I was able to carry it over into other pieces that I did. But, but um, you know, yeah, to, to reverse engineer effects like that is really, really difficult and just black and white pen and ink, you know, you almost can't, can't do it because you just, to create the gray, you would have to render everything and then it gets too busy. So that's what I'm saying is for stuff like this, you'd almost be better off leaving this just as an outline and, and having the colorist go in and do all that tricky ah oh, it's nice and we just got a couple more <laughs> i don't think i opened the page that uh of her that i drew but she's really fun to draw if you ever want to draw a goofy character she's awesome her hair is crazy too look <laughs> her hair the, i love the aesthetic of this book the goggles the weird headdresses and stuff like that it's really really funny fun fun shapes to draw she's almost got blood wolf hair So, Colony, the Essential Survival Guide. This is the, the back part of it. And again, I only grabbed maybe half of the pages of this, but um, you get a little overview of the, the world. It's nice. <laughs> Student has got a lot of gear. It reminds me a little bit of like a Dan Frega drawing in a, in a way. The you know, the the size of him, the the kind of the drawing and um whole thing. It's got a little bit of like a Frega Frega thing. Like he's got his bullets around his leg here. It's a nice little drawing. Okay. Pretty girl with lots of stuff on her. Man, that is wild. This is really interesting to see because I've been fighting tech because I've always just, I have certain things that I do with tech. Um, it's a lot of scalloping, a lot of Giger pipes and stuff like that and weird odds and ends. And I've been trying to kind of like tame it just a little bit. Then you see something like this and you go, no, nah, you know, maybe I shouldn't. It's just, it's just stuff. Like, this makes no sense. Like, what, well, I mean, he's got to, you could read what this is, but, like, I mean, what could that possibly be useful for? Or this? You're going to have all this shit under your armpit? It makes no sense. This wouldn't be very functional underneath your arm at a, a joint in your armpit. You know what I'm saying? But it looks cool. That's the thing. I'm not, like, like, I tend to lean more towards if it looks cool, do it. But... There's a part of me now that's questioning it to a small extent. It's Blood Wolf's mom. <laughs> I don't see the Rob Liefeld thing. It may not. I may not have grabbed it, or or maybe again someone will know what I'm talking about. I just remember it being a a thing back then. Man, it's awesome. All right, we got two more, and then we're gonna call this a wrap. And I'm gonna get to work. I was so. I'm so close to doing another Valent Valentin um, Setcher video today. Uh, last night I wanted to do more. <laughs> I might do one for uh, Patreon where I break down his work a bit more is what I was considering doing. Like like an educational dive where I get way more into nuts and bolts of stuff. So I try to keep these more entertainment for general YouTube. Sorry, there we go. Frazado, Keeper of the Masters. I'm going to Google this guy right now and find out what exactly he's been up to. Hopefully he's still alive and hopefully he's still drawing because uh, his stuff is super cool and it would be a shame if um, 
for whatever reason. He may have moved into a different art career too. That's very, very possible is that uh, sequential art is quite time consuming and it's quite demanding. And if you can make more money doing something, you know, uh, that you enjoy and it, it doesn't take you th through hell and back, then you, know, you might want to do it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.